and you're listening to Communities Live on Sheffield Live Radio 93.2 FM with me, Susie Casson, T-Boy's Busy Still, and we're joined in the studio by Rachel Rowlands, who's a Sheffield-based writer and poet. Welcome, Rachel. Thank you. Yeah, many thanks for coming in. And your poem, Albania 2000, which you're going to read to us in a few moments, was selected by Ian McMillan as one of his favourites as part of the feast being his Sheffield Live poetry celebration. So congratulations. Thank you very much. Yeah, lovely. <laughs> So what brought you to Sheffield initially, Rachel? I came to do a social work training and, like many people, stayed on. Fantastic. And how long have you been writing? Um, I've written in some shape or form ever since I could write, really. I've always loved writing. But about six years ago, I started writing a book about a Quaker community that I lived in. And I also started going to a WEA Writing for Children course. And I've been writing stories and poems for children ever since. Fantastic, lovely. So what kind of poetry do you tend to write? Um, I do write some serious poems, but a lot of my children's poems are kind of fantastical rhyming verse um, with a slight anarchic slant to them. (laughs) That's always good. And you mentioned you were involved for quite a while with the Quaker community. In what ways do you think that influenced you in your writing? I think just life really you rub up against lots of different kinds of people in the community and I lived alongside a lot of children and yeah it was a very rich experience as well as very intense and demanding as well yeah great and you mentioned you've published a book already yes I wrote this book about the Quaker community called An Adventure Shared um, which has just been published by a community collective called Diggers and Dreamers um, and it tells how a group of us set up an intentional community in the old Derwent Valley Water Board offices at Bamford in the Hope Valley Um, and it tells what it was like to live in the community and how that original community eventually wound up but there's now a new, well for the last five years there's been a new Quaker community there which is going strong and it runs courses and retreats. Wow, fantastic. And after that, you moved abroad, I believe. Um, Well, part way through the time I lived there, I went to live in Albania um, to work with a team of Albanian social workers on a foster care project. Fantastic. And what inspired you to write the poem Albania 2000? Albania often gets quite a bad press with things like corruption and people trafficking. Um, But it's a really beautiful country and there are some fantastic people there working really hard to change things for the better. And the food is absolutely wonderful. Um, When I was there, there were all these little street stalls um, at the side of the road. And there was this amazing cheese shop where you had to kind of climb up a flight of steps to this open-fronted counter at the top where this woman was presiding over great mountains of cheese and uh, shopping and food were great fun. Yeah, it'd be a great adventure, wouldn't it? Did you manage with the language all right? I did learn some Albanian, (laughs) but luckily a lot of people spoke English as well. That's good. (laughs) Great. So you said you would kindly read us the poem Albania 2000, which Ian Macmillan chose as one of his favourites. Come with me to a country McDonald's has not yet invaded, where even fast food is slow. Your way lit by roadside carrots glow, follow the trail of sleek green leeks to warm your hands on a loaf from the hole in the bakery wall. Free from ties of black elastic, pink-tipped spinach, sweat it sweet as soil, fill plastic bags with flat-leaved parsley, coriander, Peppers in acrobatic poses, tomatoes, beans, aubergines. Catch the gleam of olives, khaki, beige and black. Crack eggs from hens that peck and wander where they fancy for the yellowest omelette of your dreams. Approach the altars of cheese queens for crumbly curds of creamy white and catch caval to fry in thick salt slices. Meet me here at dusk on this street corner to feast on fire-charred sweet corn and chestnuts in pokes of propaganda. Fantastic, thank you. I can really feel your memories coming through the (laughs) years. 
Lovely, I was you. back there. Yeah, lovely, <laughs> thank you. Do you think you might visit again? I hope oh, to one day, yeah, yes. That's brilliant. So, Rachel, you write a lot of children's poetry as well, and you said you're putting together a collection, hopefully for publication. Um, well, I'm exploring that possibility at the moment. I can't say for definite it will happen, but I'm hoping to, and I'm hoping that um, I could sell it to raise funds for a local charity that supports volunteers helping children to read in schools. Oh, fantastic. And you, you said you can only read a couple of the children's poems as well. Yeah, it would be really um, nice. The first one I'm going to read, um, a number of children have read my poems or had them read to me, and this one seems to be their favourite, so I thought I'd read it. It's called You Can't Take a Camel on the Train. When Jimmy was invited for a visit to his gran, he rode on his camel to the station. He queued to buy a ticket, a return to Inverness, and he asked for a camel reservation. But the ticket office man, with a shudder of disdain, said, You can't take a camel on the train. We can't accommodate the hump. There'd be a problem with that lump. You can't take a camel on the train. But look at all those people heaving humpy bumpy bags. See that lumpy luggage piled on platform two? There's a man with an Alsatian that's the size of a gazelle and a mongrel that looks more like a gnu. But the ticket office man with a grimace said again, You can't take a camel on the train. Its knees are far too knobbly. Its coat is much too bobbly. You can't take a camel on the train. But dogs are rough and hairy, they've got just as many legs, and their wildly wagging tails can make a mess. My camel's clean and tidy, and she's very well behaved, and she wants to see my gran in Inverness. But the ticket office man just repeated his refrain, You can't take a camel on the train. If you'd asked to take a horse, I would say the same, of course. You can't take a camel on the train. But bicycles and wheelchairs are given special space. No one tells their owners, leave those wheels behind. My camel's how I get about. My camel is my friend. I'm sure the other passengers won't mind. But the ticket office man, who appeared to be in pain, said, you can't take a camel on the train. You can argue all you like. A camel's different from a bike. You can't take a camel on the train. So Jimmy bought his ticket, then he hugged his camel tight. With a heavy heart, he sent her on her way. The passengers surged forward and the carriage doors were slammed. Jimmy found himself alone in carriage A. But before the whistle sounded, with just seconds left to go, the train conductor sneezed and looked away. As the final door was flung, Jimmy's camel nipped aboard and the train train moved off to Jimmy's joyful yay. The ticket office man, who had noticed, roared in vain. You can't take a camel on the train. Oh yes you can, said Jim, with a cheery wave at him. You can't keep a camel off the train. (laughs) Fantastic. And it's got that streak of rebellion that you mentioned, this anarchy. (laughs) Lovely, thank you. So that was You Can't Take a Camel on the Train by Rachel Rowlands, read by Rachel Rowlands. And you've got another one for us, I think. Um, This is just a little one. One day, a ladybird landed on the handset of my telephone and I wrote this poem, Ladybird. Mum, there's a ladybird, quick, on the phone. Can you just take a message, Mum said. The ladybird wants us to make her a house with a black spotted quilt on the bed. Tell her we'll build her a beautiful house with a living room papered in red and a kitchen that's spotless with ladybird pans and a black spotted quilt on the bed. (laughs) <laughs> Lovely, thank you. Oh, brilliant. That was Rachel Rollins reading her own poem there, Ladybird. Thank you, Rachel. So how can people find out more about your writing and the book, hopefully, when it comes out? Um, well, if I manage to get this book of children's verse together, then I will publicise it at the time. Um, and the book that I've already written about the Quaker community and adventure shared um, If you look on the Diggers and Dreamers website, diggersanddreamers.org.uk, you can find out more about it there. That's wonderful. Thank you very much for coming on and reading the three poems. So that was Albania 2000, 
You Can't Take a Camel on the Train and Lady Bird, read by Rachel Rowlands. Thank, Thank you very, very much. much. Thanks. <laughs>